Good morning. Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Aaron Hill and this is a presentation or, uh, that will help, hopefully help underline some of the key factors behind trading consistency. Wherever you're located in the world, thank you for taking the time out of your day to be here with me. Hopefully you're able to take, to take something away from the following presentation. If you have any issues regarding audio or the visuals, please pop a message in the chat box and, um, and our support team might be able to get you up and running. <clears throat> However, there will be a recording of today's event, so you can go through it at your leisure. I also want to add that I'm happy to take any questions during the presentation, as long as they're relevant to the to the topic. Uh, this then avoids, you know, digressing too far away from the webinars from the webinars objective. <clears throat> uh, for those interested, you can find our recorded presentations on, uh, which I must add, are in um, a number of uh, uh, languages. Uh, you can find these on our main web page under under resources. Alternatively, visit our YouTube channel to view all recorded webinars. As usual, please bear with me while I just quickly read through the disclaimer on screen. Uh, the information contained in this material is intended for general advice only. It does not take into account your investment objectives, financial situation or particular needs. FP Markets has made every effort to ensure the accuracy of the information as at the date of publication. FP Markets does not give any warranty or representation as to the accuracy, reliability or completeness of the information contained in this material. Really, all this is saying is this, this presentation is not investment advice. It's solely an educational uh, uh, presentation. So as for presentation objectives, the initial one is, of course, learning the components of a trading plan. And, uh, and to understand, understand why this is necessary. Do bear in mind that most of this webinar is focused on the, the key components that should re uh, reside within your trading plan. This will include things like trading attitude. So look, having, having a comprehensive trading plan with, with defined entry and exit risk criteria and risk and money management procedures all count for nothing if you if you lack the the necessary discipline to implement them uh, this is where trading attitude enters play at, at, or your trading mindset if you will next up on the agenda is of, of course trading strategy this is self-explanatory uh, this is essentially a method or strategy in place to that uh, in which a trader defines entry and exit uh, conditions. Bear with me one second. And finally, we're going to take a look at a trading journal. So this should be a section in your overall trading plan. Now, it's important to note that while I will try to demonstrate key factors behind trading consistency, it's beyond the scope of a webinar to go into detail. So please do bear this in mind. As underlined in each webinar I give for questions I'm unable to, to get around to, please consider emailing the research team at marketanalyst at fpmarkets.com. Uh, this is also, let me just pop that in the chat box. So we're all on the same page. Um, this is also an email you can you can use to send over any suggestions you might have for future webinars. Just bear with me. Okay. Yeah, so please do use that email if you want to for any future webinars or suggestions of future webinars. That would be fantastic. Okay. A trading plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. A trading plan. Now, for anyone who is involved in trading the markets, should be aware of what a trading plan is and more and more importantly, have a written trading plan they work from. Please do not take offense to what I'm about to say, as this is certainly not my not my intention, but I would be surprised if most of the attendees here work with a well-defined trading plan. I would, of course, be happily surprised if each of you have a detailed trading plan, in which case 
this webinar may simply reinforce what you already know. There really is no excuse not to have a trading plan. A number of websites now even offer a free template to, to create trading plans. Let me put it this way. If, if um, to succeed in this business, to become a professional trader and maintain longevity, it is said, in fact, it's almost, it's almost an overworked phrase now, that you must treat trading as a business. And every successful business has a plan of action. action. <clears throat> Despite the importance of this statement, um, it is sadly overlooked. Or, or, or the meaning may be misunderstood. Uh, this does help explain why so many newer traders throw in the towel so early, essentially quitting before they've even begun. As I said, we are going to spend a large, a large portion of this presentation diving into trade plan structure, which will include the, the other topics I laid out, namely trading atti <coughs> attitude, uh, strategy and of course the journal this should not shock many of you but lack of a trading plan your blueprint designed to get you from a to b whilst controlling risk will in invariably invariably lead to failure so a trading plan is simply defined as it's simply a defined arrangement of rules that encompasses your entire trading plan. Uh, notice I said entire. Uh, so a trading plan is not simply your trading strategy. In other words, it's not it's not the it's not simply the methodology that determines your entry and uh, and and risk criteria. It's a comprehensive plan detailing not only your trading method but other elements like risk and money management strategies. Just to be clear, being in possession of a trading plan does not guarantee success, but a good plan, one that's, one that's followed, of course, will help minimize account losses and, and, um, and by having a pre uh, and by having a pre uh, predefined rules of engagement of how you will react to, um, to uh, possible uh, situations. So who needs a trading plan? I almost felt I almost felt like I was wasting my time placing this in the uh, presentation, as it should be plain as day obvious. The answer is everyone. Everyone who trades trades markets needs a trading plan, irrespective of of account size, uh, your trading style. You need a trading plan. Okay, so look, I hope what I've highlighted so far has has um, has underlined the importance of of a trading plan and and its factor behind trading success. Trading with a plan essentially lessens stress, stress which can lead to emotional decisions that contribute heavily heavily to trading failure. It also allows allows you to monitor progress. Uh, this is evident largely through one's trading journal and profit and risk measures on that note we're holding a short webinar on we're holding a short webinar on profit and risk measures which is scheduled on the 18th of the uh, this month at 9 a.m gmt um i'm sh i think we might have a question um good pm watching from cavity okay <laughs> nice to meet you Okay, so look now, a detailed plan will help avoid those bad trades. We can often find we often find ourselves in, uh, and essentially kick ourselves once we liquidate the position of a bad trade. By extension, a plan will help avoid irrational decisions. What are the reasons behind wanting to become a trader? And what are your go what are your goals as a trader? Look, these are questions that must be answered. That must be answered. Um, that must be answered before. Must be answered and detailed in your trading plan. In fact, this should be answered before you even consider success in this business. It's so it's 
I cannot emphasize enough. It's so important to be honest with yourself with these with answering this question. Some answers may be quite simply be more money, more time or a career that allows you to travel freely working from anywhere in the world. Some may relish the challenge of of success in a business where so many fall short. Look, it'll, it'll be great to know what your reasons are. If comfortable, feel free to feel free to note them in the chat box and I will highlight them to the rest of the group. So what type of trader are you? Are you a technician? Are you solely a technician? Uh, describe, uh, so this is essentially based on price charts. This is essentially based on price charts. This should be noted in your trading plan, of course. Uh, do you focus on fundamentals, uh, the longer term picture, or do you mix the two, so fundamentals and technical analysis? This will be detailed in your trading strategy, which please remember forms part of the overall trading plan. Also, what type of trading style will you follow? This is something that needs to be noted and uh, detailed in your trading plan. So trading, for any, for, for any newer traders pre, uh, present, a trading style, it, there's essentially four trading styles. We have position trading, we have swing trading, we have day trading, and we have scalping. So position trading is more of an investment, an investment approach, which is very in, longer term. So we're looking at maybe the monthly timeframes or weekly timeframes, maybe the daily timeframe for an entry um, uh, chart. Uh, we, and then we also have swing trading. Now swing trading is more medium term, and uh, traders tend to look at the daily time frame for their main trend and uh, the H4, maybe even the H1 time frame for entry. Uh, day trading, as its name implies, um, essentially has traders that liquidate positions prior to the market close. So these traders may use the H4 as their main trend, uh, H4 time frame as their main trend uh, time frame to, to gauge the, the overall trend of the market. And then use the H1, maybe M30, the 30 minute time frame for entries, maybe even the 15 minute time frame. Then we go on to scalping, which is incredibly short term. So with the scalping, I would imagine I've never scalped before. I would imagine that scalpers use the H1 time frame to gauge their overall trend and then the uh, five minute, maybe even the one minute time frame to, uh, as their entry criteria. Now, this should be all detailed in your trading uh, trading strategy. So risk and money management. Obviously, I do not have the scope to go into detail uh, here on each risk concept, but I will touch on some of the key components. Uh, so you will have something to work with. Risk management in any financial market is imperative if uh, to form any any kind of consistency. Uh, applying rules designed to to to, so shall we say govern risk helps traders and investors mitigate the impact of adverse market moves. So market knowledge, knowledge of the markets. Now this may be, this may be obvious, but knowledge of the markets you trade is crucial. Uh, and it's a first step to managing risk effectively. I, I think I already touched on this earlier, but there's there's essentially no excuse for not having the knowledge of your traded market. If you lose money based on that, then there's only it's, it's, it may come across as a little bit direct, but this is you only have yourself to blame if you haven't spent the time educating yourself on the markets you trade. Only invest in only invest. Uh, funds, which uh, uh, what you can afford to lose. Now, look, this is clear and should always be adopted, but only investing money you can afford to lose. This alleviates the, essentially alleviates some of the psychological pressure trading with live funds. Now, anyone that's trading with a demo account and a live trading account will know the difference. So um, just as a quick uh, aside, so a demo account is a simulated practice account in which you, you're you able to access live trading conditions, but using, shall we say, fake money. Um, and, 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 that, and that allows you to familiarize yourselves, uh, yourself with the uh, uh, platform's features and even backtest your trading strategy. However, what it doesn't do is it doesn't, doesn't, um, doesn't allow you to 
what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't allow you to experience the emotional connection trading with live funds. That will only that will only uh, be um, be evident in a live trading account when you ha actually have some skin in the game, some money in the game. So operating with a well-defined trading plan. You know, we've gone over part of, part of this already. Uh, this is a an incredibly important theme in risk control. Hopefully, this should be clear by now, given the components we've touched on already. Um, and yeah, some of the components that should fit in your overall trading plan. So risk tolerance. So know your risk tolerance. One percent of the one percent of the total account equity on each trade is considered conservative risk. I know some traders that actually uh, 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 risk zero point five percent. Uh, but they have larger accounts, so they don't necessarily need to risk uh, uh, a reasonably large percentage of their account on each trade. Well, look, 5%, I know some traders that also risk 5%, signifies reasonably aggressive risk exposure. 2%, however, is generally a standard risk metric most observe, but this largely depends on your experience level. So a risk economic calendar, this is a risk some traders overlook. Um, prudent traders know that executing new trades that's just ahead of, of news releases can place positions at unfavorable prices. This is known as slippage. They, uh, prudent traders also know to defend active positions against adverse uh, market movements around news time. This is something that should be detailed in your trading plan and 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 forms part of the risk management uh, profile. Now, leverage and margin. This is crucial understanding, and I often see a lot of confusion regarding these topics. So, look, the mismanagement of leverage is common. It is it's, just, it's such a common error among FX traders. Uh, you know, this is a practice that can destroy your account, uh, irrespective of the trading strategy. Uh, win win ratio or or you know things like that so look margin refers as a quick description of what leverage and margin is margin refers to a small amount of trading capital held by your broker which is which is there to in a, to enable you to gain leveraged exposure which is a fixed ratio by your broker it's important to note that leverage rates differ between the different products traded so, mar so margin is a portion of your account that is held by your Forex broker to ensure you have the means to cover any potential losses. Should the worst happen and your account collapses, this is what your margin's for. It's there to cover any potential losses. So margin is often called initial margin or used margin. And it, what this is, it is taken away from your free margin, which represents your free margin represents the available funds to trade in your account. So think of margin as a deposit to trade almost, which assuming risk is controlled by the trader will be returned once the trade is liquidated. So your your initial margin is not is not funds that the broker keeps. It's not a fee. It's simply a a deposit taken from your account equity that will be returned once your trade is liquidated that is it it's there to as i said it's there to so you have the means to cover any potential losses that may occur so the leverage ratio offered by forex brokers essentially controls the margin required this is important to understand so let me repeat that the leverage ratio offered by your forex broker essentially governs the the margin required so each broker has a maximum allowable leverage for example 50 to 1 100 to 1 uh, 500 to 1 i've seen some brokers 2000 to 1 uh, dividing the account leverage ratio highlights the margin percent required to trade so this is your initial margin to trade the market so look one so let me just try and help you understand this for anyone that's new to this so one divided by 100 for a leverage ratio of 1 to 100 equates to 0.01 or 1% margin required to trade. So if you're trading a standard lot, 100,000 units of the base currency of a currency pair, 
and um, the, the margin to trade will be 1% of uh, 100,000, that's your notional value, and that will be uh, 1,000, say, assume your account's in dollars, that will be 1,000 US dollars initial margin required to trade that position of uh, in um, uh, with a, a leverage ratio of 100 to 1. So look, there's also other leverage ratios, which is very common now, 1 to 30. Uh, and we simply divide 1 by 30 and that to reach 0.033 or 3.33% margin required to trade. And we simply do the same as what we did before. So look, as you can see, leverage, margin and leverage are closely related. Uh, so look, higher leverage, all higher leverage means equals lower initial margin. That's it. Lower, le lower leverage equals higher initial margin. What you need to focus on is your position size. That's the key here. Ma leverage will not change. High so look, the only, the only way you... So it's vital to understand that account leverage will not change unless you do so through your broker's client portal. This is fixed. This is fixed when you open your account. I believe you can select this. So if you select a, a, a 100 to 1, that's fixed. What governs your, your overall risk is your position size. So the, um, sorry, I, I, I went on a bit about that. <laughs> so look, next up is the protective stop loss order. Uh, the stop loss order is another key risk management tool. Look, all trade entries. I know some traders that do trade without stops and they do very well, but for the majority of us, me included, all trade entries should be should should have a a protective stop loss order in place to a, you know in place to avoid potentially damaging losses to a trader's account. Now I must add, the traders that I know that trade with um, that trade without stop losses do have mental stop losses, which sounds a bit insane. I know, but mental stop losses means they have a predefined level on their chart where they know enough is <clears throat> enough is enough. It's time to get out, and they have the discipline to follow that. So the protective stop loss order is placed at the level of maximum limit of loss from entry and is sometimes referred to as a money management stop. This is because it prevents the complete loss of capital or what's known as account ruin. Uh, numerous methods exist to, to, um, to, to determine the um, to determine where the protective stop loss order is placed, which I'm sure most of us know here. Um, so look, a technical stop is one is one that's positioned at a price that is pl placed according to a technical level. So think support and resistance. So if you're long the market, you look at support levels to uh, adjust your. If you're trailing the market, and you you look at support levels to um, to you know assign the stop loss. But if you're just entering the market, you can place your stop just below the support. That's just a basic example. Um, it's also sometimes called a critical. Uh, I believe it's called a critical threshold stop, and is it, you know it's, it, this is commonly used by many of us technical traders. Um, so another common common way of of employing protective uh, stop loss orders is known as a break even stop, which I'm sure most of us here do use. Um, essentially, a break even stop is if we're long the market, let's say one one ten or, or one say say one 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 twenty. On the euro or something, and we want to place our stop at one spot 19.50, and price moves uh, one R, which is uh, one times the risk in in favour. Uh, price is now at one spot 20.50. We can now move our stop to break even. We've essentially reduced risk to break even. So, barring a catastrophic event, you know, like a black swan or something like that, our our, our trade is essentially risk free. So other methods of arranging protective stop loss orders, of course, are the trailing stop, which I briefly touched on, a trend line stop, as its name implies, a trend line is applied to the chart from in in, in terms of an uptrend, so higher lows, higher high, uh, higher low, defined by higher higher lows, um, and and the stop is placed below that. Um, a signal stop is essentially the so it's so. It, the signal you use to get into the market. So if you used a a break a, a bounce off a trend line support, that's your entry into the market. But the signal stop is the break off that trend line. So it's essentially the mirror opposite of that uh, entry signal. 
and and of course we we also have a, a what's known as time based stops again as its name implies a time based stop is is essentially is essentially so if if we enter the euro again at 120 and we say after 5 hours assuming we're trading the h1 chart we we we're out of the market after 5 candles or or if we're trading the daily chart we're out of that market within 5 days it's as simple as that okay finally a risk reward ratio uh, the risk reward ratio is it measures how much potential how much potential reward for every dollar of risk now this is often this is also called the payoff ratio i believe um the ratio approximates the reward that a trader may earn against against the risk they are willing to invest so the idea is to seek is to seek trade setups that what obviously where reward outweighs risk uh, the larger the reward the more think about it this way so the, the larger the reward the more flexibility the trading ha account has in terms of failed trade so if you if your trades earn you four to one uh sorry uh, a one to four uh risk reward ratio which means you earn four times the amount of risk on on some on on most of your trades, you have a lot of flexibility flexibility in terms of your losing trade. So a loss or two losses or even three consecutive losses should not really affect you emotionally if you're earning if you're managing to net at least four times your risk. That's just a basic example there. So look, many do claim a minimum of one to two risk re reward ratio is needed to achieve success in the financial markets. I don't. 100% agree with this because I know some scalpers that do very well and they essentially focus on a one to one risk reward ratio. So it's very, very, it depends on the trader. It's, 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 it really is trader dependent. So risk reward ratios are presented in price form. So for example, a risk reward ratio of one to two means that a trader uh, will risk $1 for the potential of earning $2. It's as simple as that. This is known as your expected return. Okay. Traded markets. Consistent traders tend to restrict their focus to a limited number of markets. Uh, this is different to many novice traders I've seen. I must clarify something, however, that and that is professional traders do take into account the intermarket relationships uh, that exist in the market. So they do take note of where the US dollar is, usually by way of, of the dollar index. And this is a geometric weighted average of the, of the dollar's value against six major international currencies, with the euro being the largest um, uh, component within that index, uh, about 57.6%, I believe. So the professional traders also look at commodities, so gold and silver, as well as oil. Uh, the bond markets are also a key watch, as are equity indexes. So look, if you trade FX, educate yourself on this market. Do not just simply guess which way the euro is heading against the dollar or the pound or the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen. Understand your traded markets. For example, euro dollar tends to be slightly less volatile than the pound dollar. Uh, the uh, and the Japan and and the pound against the Japanese yen it, on average is is much more volatile than these two pairs. So you need to understand the the characteristics of your traded markets. What are what are the average spreads of on your traded currency pairs? This is another key element you should understand. What economic indicators tend to have the most effect on your trading traded markets? Now, just as, as an aside, we do have the Bank of England at midday uh, in less than three hours now, midday GMT. So do keep an eye on that uh, for the uh, especially around GBP pairs. Uh, there's a 50 50 percent 50 50 chance. Um, <laughs> That we will see the Bank of England raise interest rates, which could see the pound take on a bullish phase. That will be interesting to keep an eye on. So, look, that's in two and a half, two, that's at the uh, midday GMT. So, look, are your markets generally liquid? Basically, are they easily tradable, easy to enter and exit without little slippage? So, I've mentioned slippage twice now. For those unaware of what slippage is, 
it is simply when it is simply it is simply when the price at which your order is executed does not match the price at which it it was requested by us, the trader. Uh, and this is found mostly in a volatile mar market condition, such as uh, news events or, or the, the the crazy market shocks, which are sometimes called uh, you know black swan events or you know catastrophic events. Uh, there really is there. There really is no excuse here, I feel, with the lack of, uh, I have touched on this already, but the lack of knowledge is a risk in all businesses and will ultimately hinder progression. So education, education on the markets you trade, education is a key element to success. You know, read books, attend presentations, and when all is better with the world, um, and we are free to attend seminars, attend these too. Consider visiting, uh, also consider visiting our, our dedicated educational section. We have uh, we have a, a truckload of eBooks, archived webinars. Um, it, as I've said at the beginning, in multiple languages, um, we have uh, Italian, we have uh, Polish, we have um, uh, Vietnamese, Thai. So do uh, do do um, do visit those if you're interested. And we also have con uh, a con um, consecu um, consecutive a consistent flow of in-depth articles uh, on basic on 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 trading topics okay trading attitude your mindset to it, it, you know it's a key obstacle uh, that lies between you and success in the markets a lot of uh, sadly this is often overlooked as well it, it really gets to me sometimes uh, so many traders overlook this and just focus on strategies i understand i do understand if you feel that if you can if you can generate a good entry into the market and uh, potentially a good exit, all you have to do is follow those rules. Try that with a larger account, and and things become things do become difficult. So look, I also I say this in every webinar that trading psychology plays a huge part of in your success as a trader. Do not underestimate this. I actually have a presentation on trading psychology, which can be found on our uh, the FP Markets YouTube channel, or alternatively under the uh, resources tab on the main FPM webpage. So if you're interested in, in, in furthering your knowledge in this field, uh, consider the book Trading in the Zone, written by the late Mark Douglas. Uh, this book, it, for me, I have no affiliation with with uh, the company, but the, the book is superb, in my opinion, and it's written in an easy to read structure structure that almost anyone can understand. Um, also, an another point to, to uh, that can help with trading attitude is consider the use of a mentor. This can really speed up the learning process, both in the application of trading techniques and understanding the mental aspects. Excuse me. Now, I understand many of you will ask, how can we find a mentor? And I totally get that. There are many available, but I, I would always go with those who are willing to disclose their trading results. Look, we are not looking for a trading wizard in 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 terms of a mentor that would be great but for me I, I i would be looking we are simply looking for someone who with a reasonably proven track record that ends each year with absolute gains now some traders may focus on relative gains uh, what i mean by this is uh, relative to a benchmark so they base their gains relative to say the s p 500 or the uh, uh, for those in the us uh, large cap or the FTSE 100 for those in uh, london so trading goals. So what type of goals have you set for yourself? Um, I feel this kind of kind of fits into the bucket of trading attitude. So what are your annual goals? I'm not referring to mon monetary gains here. I'm thinking more in terms of knowledge and increasing your skill set. There is always, always room for improvement. As an example, a goal could be to ensure you always adhere to to your set risk profile on each trade no matter what or i will or or for in, or another example i will not alter stop losses because i'm i'm sure most of us here have altered our stop losses at some stage in our trading career i'm i'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of us have um so we set the stop loss and we see 
the trade go uh, uh, trade uh, move unfavorably, and we think, hmm, let's move our stop. Just let's give a, a little more breathing breathing room. And then when price continues to um, decline in in terms of a say a long entry, we move it again, and it becomes it's it's just somewhere you it's it's a place you don't want to be. Um, so look, yeah, look by having a goal you have set your mind towards a target and once achieved look to develop further each year so in addition to annual goals consider setting monthly or even weekly goals i'm not a big fan of setting daily goals as i found this was too much pressure for me but i do know of traders that do swear by daily goals um look with regards to financial targets i know some traders do set these uh, do set these and I understand the logic behind this but in trading we can never we can never be guaranteed a gain it's just in, you can't guarantee gains from the market uh, we can never really place yeah we can never really place that on the market if that makes sense uh, so therefore my main goal goal setting procedure involves involves Avoiding setting financial targets as much as possible. I always believe that if you're working with a, a structured trading plan that is followed and the rules are adhered to, and a method that has a proven edge, the rewards, in other words, the gains, will effectively take care of themselves. And this leads this kind of leads us nicely on to uh, some of you know some of Mark Douglas's uh, uh, work on trading psychology. Now he was the gent the uh, gentleman that wrote uh, the Trading in the Zone book that I just mentioned. Um, when traders say they they trade, when traders say they trade with prob trade the probabilities or that you you need to do that, what 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 they're essentially saying is that as long as you have a winning system and edge, um, you will make you will make money even if you have losing trades, which we will, we, we will, we all will have um, over the short term. Um, let me repeat that. We will make. <laughs> let me just repeat that. So look, if we we, I'm just trying to trying to uh, word this the best way. So look, if we trade probabilities. And we we we're working with a winning system. We you will make money even if you do have even when you do have losing trades. So look, in essence, this is a good approach and the, and the right mindset to be in. Just focus on making the best trades, following uh, over the long term, following your trading plan, and you will come out ahead. Um, look, ha, look, all an edge is is an advantage or um, is is the probability of one thing happening over another and this is a skill that you know that you know this is <clears throat> understanding this i believe is a skill so look an edge can come in different forms from you know psychological resilience uh risk and money management uh, understanding and, and adopting risk and money management skills is another edge um a great understanding of technicals so the price movement um where orders are likely um a likely positioned uh, price action uh, or being able to interpret uh, fundamental data in a meaningful way so the meaning is always the same in regards to an edge trading in a way that allows you to generate a positive return by following a repeatable process now successful traders trade probabilities not predictions we have zero idea whether the next trade, the trade after that, or even the trade subsequent to this will be a winner. But we do not need to know this in order to generate a return. Now, this is something Mark, uh, Mark Douglas really hits on in his book. And it's so true, I believe. Anyone that tells you we need to know what's going to happen next to be a consistently prof profitable trader is wrong. I know this may come across as strong, but we do not need to know what's going to happen next to be a consistently, consistently profitable trader. It's interesting to note that, say for a, say for a traditional chart pattern, let's take the common ball flag for example. 
the chart formation and entry signal is not a prediction of how a trade will turn out. The future is always unknown, right? So a setup or breakout or a pattern is just the is just something that gives you higher odds of success on entry. It, it it's essentially it's essentially telling you that there is a higher chance of this happening over this. That's it. Um, so the reason traders have stop losses is that they do not know on on entry um, whether price will will trend or or, or their pro profit target uh, trend to their profit target or or reverse and go against them. This is the main idea of the stop loss to protect you against losses, because we don't know if one trade is, is is if this trade is going to work or this trade is going to work, irrespective if we're following um, the same trading. Uh, uh, approach on every single trade. Stop losses are your risk managers. Um, look, profit targets are, are the best case scenarios and position sizing manages your risk of ruin. So a signal, look, a signal is just to get you on the right side of the, an attempt to get you on the right side of the path of least resistance. Um, so a trading stop, which we briefly touched on is a tool that can keep you can keep you within the trend until the end when it stops you know when it stops being your friend I guess you could say um, real traders professional professionally consistent traders manage their trades as they play out in real time um, so another element um, that would need addressing are trade limits uh, this is so so what so what is the maximum drawdown you'll allow your trade uh, you'll allow before not trade you'll allow your account before you would pull back and stop trading so if the account dropped 20 percent is this enough for you to say that uh, that's enough something's wrong here we need to step back and assess the uh, what's going on here this is this is commonly referred to as your maximum drawdown and this is something we'll go over in our in uh, the uh, uh, the webinar on profit and risk measures. It's surprising how many traders do not understand the basics of profit and risk measures um, and how to evaluate those uh, with the syst uh, their systems. Okay, tools of the trade. First and foremost, you need a, a broker to trade with. Uh, choose one that's regulated by well-known regulatory bodies and one that features a, a easy access to support as these are the people you will need to contact should you have an issue. Also ensure the broker provides a uh, provides the market, this should be obvious, provides the market you wish to trade. Also check which uh, platforms the broker offers. Most will accommodate MT4 and MT5 with FP Markets, also offering the uh, IRS platform. This is a powerful platform allowing one to, I think it's access more than 10,000 uh, CFD shares. Um, another one, of course, is the broker investing in education. So do they offer webinars in, 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 uh, in multiple languages? Do they show interest in developing an educational offering? A broker that understands the trader is a good pick in my humble opinion. Okay, trading. Um, look, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of us here are familiar with what a trading strategy is. Um, ultimately, it's look, it's up to you to decide what is the best what is the best trading strategy for you? Uh, some important factors to consider, in, uh, of course, include your personality type, your lifestyle and available and, and the resources available to yourself. So uh, also what type of trading strategy, uh, trading style will you follow? Uh, we also, so in terms of trading strategy, we, there, are, there are a number of, of um, a number we can follow. So we have price action, uh, uh, price action as a trading strategy, uh, which is what I largely follow in my daily market analysis. And uh, this 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 combines um, support and resistance, supply and demand, uh, prime support and resistance, um, trend lines, um, the Fibonacci. I'm a big fan of Fibonacci clusters. Also, um, I also do use the technical indicator, the RSI, to gauge momentum in the, in, in my trading market. 
but this is how I largely focus on price action. We also have trend following strategies. Now, trend, a trend following strategy relies on so is is there to it relies on you know indicators or price action to identify the trend and 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 is an attempt to jump on that in that trend at the earliest possible at the earliest possible uh, um, uh, opportunity. Uh, this is usually considered a you know a medium term strategy with with some even uh, some looking at long term trends, which is termed the primary trend according to Dow theory. Um, so this is, so in terms of trading style, this is best suited to, if you remember, the position traders, which is more of an investment approach and the um, swing trading approach, more of a medium term um, outlook. Then we also have breakout trading. Uh, breakout trading consists of entering a on a given trend as early as possible. Uh, you know, the easiest way to describe this is look at a range. So prices in a range, prices fluctuating between a range, and we break out uh, above the range resistance, and we we try to trade based on that moment, uh, momentum out of the range. Uh, this is often used by uh, this can be used by day traders and uh, also swing traders. Uh, we also have momentum based strategies. You know, um, this happens when there's heavy price movement, uh, and you know. We we try to trade in in line with that momentum. Uh, it's, it's really simple as that. So it's 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 another another form of breakout trading in my opinion. We also have mean reversion, uh, mean mean reversion strategies. Essentially, <clears throat> essentially these are range based trading strategies. Uh, buy buy. So look, buy when price has deviated. So I'm trying to trying to explain this. So we, what we what we're looking to do is buy when price has deviated to the low side of the range and sell when it gets to the high side. And this is in anticipation of price reverting back to some form of mean value. Okay, trading journal. It will be interesting to know how many of us actually adopt the use of a trading journal. If you could pop Y or N in the chat box, that would be great if you do use a trading journal. I know I did not when I first began trading, but I quickly realized its use, thankfully. Um, look, a trading journal is there to help <clears throat> help us track performance. Uh, recording trades and reviewing this information. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, good. That's really good. So reviewing, uh, so it allows us to review the information uh, in allows us to review information to improve our processes. Trading journals can help identify can help identify mistakes that will improve a trader's that should help improve a trader's profit and loss. It also it just you know I've already said this but it helps track uh, trading performance. It identifies uh, strengths, it uh, also identifies weaknesses. And look, it can help regulate emotions because as, as I'm going to describe very shortly, what should be included in a trading plan, it can help highlight the points where you're too emotional in a trade. Um, so look, what to include in a trading journal? So your ideas, so your ideas are obviously need to be included within the journal. Uh, this includes entry and exit plans um, and and stating where why you took that particular trade setup. Uh, the position size should be noted as well. The position size taken on on that particular trade, uh, the realized the realized wins or losses uh, should be noted. So how you felt before before you took the trade, during the trade, and after the trade. Now I I, I regularly speak with a a friend of mine in Chicago who trades the futures market, and um, to to help to help uh, record this, he has a camera. Uh, facing him, very similar to what you're seeing me now, a, a webcam facing him, and he records his his facial expressions, and he said he was surprised at how at how his facial expressions could tell his his emotional um, his emotional uh, his emotional um, uh, uh, yeah his emotions at that time. But he also has a microphone, so he records what he's feeling at the time as well instead of just typing it during the trade because you're normally focused on your trade. Um, 
and also after the trade as well. So it's, it's a good idea to note what you've, um, how you feel after the trade. Uh, some traders simply write this freely on a Word document. Um, others look at using Excel. I personally, I personally prefer the latter. So using a Word document as it feels more personal, it feels just more personal to me. The reasons why I believe some of us do not believe, do not keep a trading journal is simply, the only reason I can think of is time. Uh, they think it's a waste of time. Um, and I, I understand that it is time consuming, but it's it's time well spent. And I would strongly, strongly recommend any um, any aspiring trader to take this on. I, I as I said at the, uh, during this presentation, I initially did not keep a trading journal and the mentor that I was working with, um, yeah, I could just see in his face when I told him I hadn't been keeping a trading journal when he when he instructed me to, and uh, yeah, and then and then following this, I did start keeping that, and uh, things started really really improving because I started to see my weaknesses and my strengths, and started to you know, uh, it really improved my bottom line. Okay, Q and A. We we've had zero questions during this presentation, so I hope. What I've said is it is, has been easily understood. Are there any questions at this point um, on anything you, you don't understand or, or, or something you need further clarification on? If not, hi, Maggie. <laughs> okay, there does not seem to be any questions. Um, so I assume we're all good. Yes, Peter, journal is best on how to improve. Yes, um, and as I said, guys, it should be included within your trading plan. It should be accommodated within your trading. So just, just imagine your trading plan is like a big, uh, it's just like a big filing box and everything goes in into um, in, in there. And that include, <clears throat> includes your trading journal, your trading, um, your trading uh, strategy as well. Um, Uh, we have a question here. How long does it take to trade to make a living? <laughs> that's from Maggie. Uh, Maggie, look, that's this can be very. This can be. This is. Well, that's such a that's such a uh, wide ranging question. Um, I'm not sure because it it all depends on the trader, right? So, if you have five to six hours on average, on average, um, I won't tell you how long it took me to reach a, a level that I'm comfortable with because it might shock you. Uh, it was very, very long. Um, but I've heard the average is five years. Uh, for me, I will tell you actually, it took me around nine years because um, because <laughs> I was just so hot headed. I was young as well. I didn't um, I didn't um, listen to any listen to my mentor at all. I just thought I knew everything, and it just really took me a lot, a lot of time to uh, listen to someone and uh, take on their advice. Um, Peter says three years. Yes, I agree. It can take three years. Um, it just, it really, it really is trader dependent, right? So if you have five to six hours, um, it, if you have five to six hours a day to spend on tr trading, uh, the study of trading, then yes, I agree with Peter. It could take three years. It could, it could even be quicker than that. I know traders that have just, just took to this like a you know a duck to water it was really really um quick for them so it's on average i would say as peter said three years between three to five years again depending on your time uh, your time um um uh, you can commit to this but look you're you're going to especially for newer traders you're going to enter into what, what i call is a vicious cycle of you get one trading strategy you test it you think you test it, you test it two or three times and it gives you two losses and one win. And then you move on to another strategy and then it does the same. And then you move on to another strategy. And then all of a sudden you're coming back to this site, uh, to the, to, you, you tested, you think you've tested so many strategies and when really you haven't. And it's just a vicious, a frustrating, a stressful cycle. And it's something I, I don't wish on anyone because I went through that for years and I just did not listen to my mentor. Uh, and you know what, my, my, I spoke to my mentor like years after I actually started um, uh, listening to what his advice and um, it was just, 
he said it's, 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 it's trading is very simple. It's just we we tend to make it uh, a difficult um, a difficult task. But look, guys, if you are um, if you are if you if you are just starting out, I would wholeheartedly recommend look at Trading Psychology. Read that book, Trading in the Zone, um, by Mark Douglas. Read it, read it cover to cover. Uh, before you look, start looking at trend lines, support and resistance, because there is so so much on the internet about um, trading uh, methods and things like that. Focus on trading. Um, focus on your uh, trading psychology. Understand what it means to have the mindset of a trader, because it is very it's very different to um, it's very different to many other businesses. Um, and and you know I, I can't emphasize that enough. Just focus on your trading psychology, and um, yeah. Um, look, I can tell you, my mentor traded very, 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 very basically, and I mean, this was support and resistance trend lines. He did use harmonics. He does use harmonics. Um, harmonics is the. Oh, we also have a webinar, I believe, on harmonics uh, this month as well. Um, look, for me, there was a question: um, Are you consider yourself from Peter making a living in trading now? Now, as you can see, I do work for FP Markets. I do. I am their market analyst, but if prior to this, I did trade full time. As 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 I did say, I didn't really set financial goals, but I did make an annual return um, from my trading uh, over th four years before I become the market analyst and dedicate my time to this. Um, I, I didn't make money every week. I certainly didn't make money every month. Um, but but my mentor, this was the crazy thing. Um, he made money. Ugh, it was just insane. Nearly every month he was he was up. He he made money. Um, yeah, it's just insane. And um, yeah, so uh, it, it just depends. Everyone is very, very different. How do I find a mentor? Yeah, Maggie, I did touch on that, I believe, in the in the presentation. Um, finding a mentor is is difficult. I was very, very lucky um, in my it, uh, when I first began. My mentor offered to teach me for for free. Um, I was very, very young. I was I was very um, enthusiastic. As I, I still am now. Um, he offered to teach me for free, um, and yeah, and I know how lucky I was. How do you find a mentor? Look for someone that's willing to prove that they can trade. Um, would be my first advice, really. Um, yeah, it's it's not easy because there's a lot of uh, gurus out gurus out there now that uh, yeah, it's, it's it's difficult to um, um, to you know to to uh, to 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 actually make a decision on, on who you want to become your mentor, but a lot of this stuff can be found on the internet for free. There's a lot of good traders in in forums, a lot of consistently successful traders in forums as well. Um, it's just you need to have the experience to be able to um, uh, to be able to understand wh those that are talking. Um, you know, uh, those that are not. What, what's the word I'm looking for? Those that are not. They're not trading successfully, and uh, yes, um, and to those that are. Um, another question from Peter, but are, you are a long-term trader using the one-hour chart. No, in my daily market analysis, I'm not sure if you follow that. This is another question from Peter. So my daily market analysis consists of the monthly time frame to the daily time frame. That's on one side of the chart, and the other side has the H4 and H1. So what I look at, I look at the bigger, bigger. The bigger picture with the uh, weekly and daily uh, time frames. And then I look at the H4 and H1. So H1 is my is 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 literally my lowest um, chart. So I use a multi time frame approach. You can look at I did a webinar on that recently. Um, please do look at that if you're interested. Uh, the um, uh, on multi time frame analysis. Um, but that's how I I, I you always use the one hour chart and um, and also I, I I absolutely love the RSI the relative strength index guys if you're if you're interested in in I also did a webinar on that as well recently uh, the RSI these are all available in the uh, archives on the FBM uh, webpage also on the uh, YouTube channel the RSI is fantastic for me I use it I use it primarily to for divergences within overbought and oversold. I don't tend to focus on the divergent signals that are um, that are uh, outside of the overbought and oversold uh, um, areas. And this was something that was taught to me by my mentor, and that he uses. 
so okay um yeah maggie i like using the rsi too yeah it's fantastic um i do I, i've got nothing against the stochastics these are rather momentum oscillators i've got nothing against the stochastics or the um the macd i just really find that i suppose because my mentor really nudged me into the rsi uh, it become an easy adjustment for me i just never really found the macd or the stochastics to be uh of much use really for me um that's not to say that they don't they're, they're not of use to other traders also fibonacci yes maggie i love fibonacci as well do check out my daily market analysis if you're interested, Maggie. Uh, there's a lot on Fibonacci. I use Fibonacci clusters. Uh, there's a book. I can't remember the name now, but I read uh, when I was studying Fibonacci. Um, oh God, uh, it was written by a, a, a woman uh, called Caroline Broaden, I believe. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic book, and it really shows you how to use Fibonacci correctly. Also, I also have a webinar on Fibonacci, uh, Maggie, if you're interested. Um, uh, again, you can find that on the FPM uh, archives. Look, guys, uh, look, that's all we have time for today. Yeah, Daniel, sorry about that. It's the time difference. We've we've swapped back to, so Daniel's just commented. <laughs> uh, must be a time difference. I thought it was at 10 a.m. Yes, uh, <laughs> I was wondering where you was. <laughs> You're normally there. Um, look, uh, yes, so we've moved, so the UK's moved back moved to gmt now haven't we so um look uh this is pretty much all we have time for today uh thanks once again for taking the time to join uh, i hope you are able to walk away with uh, slightly more informed than when you joined uh, webinars on the horizon are are the harmonic trading on thursday the 11th of um 11th of this month then a short presentation on profit and risk measures on the 18th and then a look at behavioral biases on the 25th um yes daniel the uh we are staying gmt now so next week it will be at 9 a.m gmt so with that have a great day everyone and uh, thank you for your time and i'll see you all again very very soon